Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3D Print Lab. Today we'll be printing the human farm for the sheep tech community. First off is location. It's found in I found it in the Warcraft 3 art for the Starcraft 2 editor. It's easier to extract the Warcraft 3 assets from the Starcraft 2 editor, as weird as that might sound. But it is. Phase 2 is extraction. I'm going to go to console and type in browse and then we'll find the farm dots m3 in the starcraft 2 editor go ahead and extract that out okay three is coordination We'll bring it into 3ds Max using the .m3 plugin tools. And first off, we're going to start by removing extra geometry that we're not going to need. Most of this is from the construction models that are baked into the model itself. Typically what Blizzard likes to do with, with construction models and those associated animations is they'll take all that geometry and just put it underground. And so while it's building, you'll see the foundation, you'll see the scaffolding and all that. And then when that stuff's done, they'll take all that and just shove that underground and you'll see the model complete. But for what we're going to print out, we're not going to need any of that. So I'll just go through and select all this extra geometry we don't need and delete it. This is one of those models I've been trying to print for probably like the last five or six years. It's just, it's, there's lots of pieces to it. There's lots of trash. You have to know what to get rid of. Not everything is something you want to keep. Definitely not everything is something that's going to print. And so you really got to go through and try to sort through what's there and get rid of what you don't need focus on fixing the geometry that is going to print. So once we do that, then we're going to select all the vertices for the foundation, and we're just going to scale them in the Y and move them up to make the foundation smaller, easier to print. The green triangle area is, uh, we have to rebuild that triangle area in the middle because it's just a hole and it won't print. So we're on to conversion now. And we're going to try to print the model just using automatic support. Just as a control, just to show how terrible automatic support really is. Move on to production. We have a print time of 3 hours and 2 minutes, and we used 36 grams of PLA. You can see it's printing all that automatic support. But, unfortunately, when we try to remove all the support, it just ends up destroying everything. It's too solid, there's too much of it, and it just makes a huge mess. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to focus on fixing the scaffolding. So we're going to try to try to reduce this model to just the scaffolding and see if we can get that to print. If that's not going to work, we're going to have to re remodel the scaffolding. But something that's simple and wouldn't be really hard to wouldn't be hard to remodel anyway. So we on that path if we have to. But first we'll just try to isolate the scaffolding as it exists removing any extra construction mesh that's there. So I added some custom support that's um, 
custom support to this model. And I also took it in a mesh mixer and I added the custom tree support to it as well. So we'll preview what that's going to look like. And then we'll try printing it out. You can see right here it breaks. But it's still it'll print on top of a broken piece. Which is a miracle of FDM printing, I suppose. And then here we are, kind of redesigning the little green base that the farm will sit on. And at this point, uh, we've determined that our best solution is going to be to completely remodel the scaffolding. There's no way that we're going to be able to take Blizzard's geometry and fix it, so we're just going to end up having to delete everything and start over. So we'll get rid of all that. That'll leave us with just the part of the foundation that we can build on top of. That way we'll have something clean to build on top of and test. And we'll start by remodeling the support beams and then we'll work on the boards themselves. And then we'll copy those scaffolding pieces four times. We'll make the foundation a little bit wider. And then we'll go through and we'll make a new plank. And when we make this plank, since we can, well, since we have the opportunity to remodel it from scratch, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll try to triangulate it as much as possible. So there's four different corners, and each corner will be embedded into part of the post for the scaffolding. And it'll try to print it from each corner at, at like 30 degrees from each corner up into the middle and be able to print a flat top on top of that. This is better than trying to support it. This is better than trying to print something that's flat. While you can bridge things to a certain degree, most of the time you're going to want to try to print things at an angle so that you don't have to use as much support. The less support you need, the better. And definitely, I think most of the time when you're designing something from scratch, you should be able to design out support as you work. Go ahead and attach everything and then bullying everything together to make a one solid piece. We'll export it off as an STL. I'll bring it to the software. And then we will slice it to preview and see how it's going to print. First off, we'll print off in blue to get a control. That seems to print fine. Then we're going to try to print it off in our wood fill filament, which is brown. The problem with brown is you get a lot of you get a lot of stringing when you print with wood fill. And then here we're reducing the temperature to try to reduce stringing, but it seems to not want to stick to the bill plate and ends up failing. So we're gonna we're gonna not go down the path of wood fill with this model. 
could try to do that. It's one of those materials that is harder to print with. So I figured we'd give it a shot. So there's a couple, couple more quick fixes we need to do to the farm before we print it. We're gonna have to put a new side roof on. Uh, the new green middle, which is... We've done that before, but we'll do it again. And then there's we need we have to angle the uh, top plank on both sides so that it won't need to be supported. So we're just matching the new roof to completely replace the old one. It doesn't slice very well and it doesn't print well either. I don't think it printed very well in our tests that we did. So there it is. Just go ahead and delete that old geometry so that it won't cause any kind of coplanar faces or any kind of problem like that. just go ahead and replace all that with a solid piece, it's not going to give us problems. And then we'll angle the bottom so that that's printing at the angle as well, so that it won't have to be supported in the front either. That's one of the biggest tricks when it comes to FDM, FFF printing, is to angle things and as long as most things are more than like 20, 25 degrees, they're going to print just fine. There's definitely ways to do it without being super obvious. So here we have that new roof. We've, we're going to, let's see. We've got the new green part and we angled the side posts. And then we export everything together. It takes an hour and 45 minutes, it takes 17 grams of my Push Plastic Yellow PLA. And then we're going to be changing the green part again just a little bit. As we print things we get a better idea of what we need ultimately. Ultimately, you know, has to fit in the box, has to print a decent time. It's about an hour to print the green part. Here's the three different bases we have from their tournament they did. The world's fastest master for sheep tag, December 2 through 6, 2020. Printed three different bases for three different winners. Printed off my goal. third place, because the second place person didn't want their trophy for whatever reason. Printed it off in some bronze. And then for fourth place, I printed off orange. Here's the first place trophy. Some silver paint to highlight the letters. I also added some little shrubs and some rocks. And you can see that those scaffolding print about any support. The farm didn't use any support at all. That's not perfect, but much easier than trying to remove a lot of support from a very tiny area without breaking the rest of it. And finally, the fourth place. Anyway, it was a great tournament. I'm really happy to be working with these uh, cheap tag people. 
pretty good people. It's, it's fun to do stuff like this. And I'll see you in the next one.